Saturday because um, although we know about relationships, we know about uh, our relationship between brothers and sisters, church and Christ, yet we need to be reminded from time to time about the strength and about the, uh, the uh, very object lesson that God has given us regarding relationships, which is marriage. So marriage is God's supreme uh, objective, or shall we say, uh, uh, the best object lesson, the best example that we could understand the relationship between Christ and the church. How do we know and understand how to behave in the church, how to handle ourselves in serving God, is the way we understand about relationships regarding marriage. So the first on, uh, topic of In My Father's House 3 is about um, dating, which uh, these little kids, I know if they could understand, but uh, well, they will just <laughs> be there and um, somehow they might be able to someday. But praise the Lord. Or, or, or the last time that we had this topic, we um, gathered all those little kids at the back and they have some kind of uh, work that they have done. So next Wednesday, uh, these little children will have some kind of work. The parents will be able to let them do it that they will be staying there and all the adults, the young people will stay and listen to our lesson. So parents, if you could bring some kind of work for them to do, maybe the school homework, they can do it at the back and um, it will be good for them as well. So the first topic that we will have is the principles of Christian dating. Although uh, dating is not really emphasized in the Bible, but as our culture suggests that uh, it's a precursor to marriage, we might as well discuss dating in terms of relationships between sisters and brothers, which will lead to marriage one of the, these days that they are having a relationship. So um, we know that... Um, um, marriage has been given in the Bible for so many uh, scriptures and verses, uh, just like Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 is talking to us about uh, submitting ourselves one to another, and it says, um, Husband, love your wives, and wives, submit to your husbands. And um, let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 5, and let's rem be remembered, let's remind ourselves of what is written there. Chapter 5 and verse, start at verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So you will notice that Paul is trying to intertwine the relationship between husband and wife and the relationship between Christ and the church. It's always that Paul is doing that. Also in the epistles of uh, Peter, he also tried to intertwine church and Christ and husbands and wives. So um, if we continue um, reading that, um, in verse 27, and he might present it to himself a glorious church. So he's talking now about the church. 
not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So the church of the living God will be without spot and without blemish, without blame, so as the wife to their husbands. It's, it's, it's quite difficult and hard for human beings to be able to do what the Lord Jesus Christ has been telling in the scriptures. But because we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit, that we can, we can do all things in Christ, which strengthen us, we are able to do it. We will not say to ourselves that it's too hard, we cannot do it. Um, but we are able to do it. We are overcomers. We can do these things through Christ our Lord. Amen? So he says here, without any spot or wrinkle, a church or the bride of Christ, example as the wives or the wife, should be without spot and blemish and wrinkle. Blameless. We are not talking about uh, blameless in terms of our carnal thinking, but in terms of the spiritual way God sees us. So perfection in God means that we are mature enough to be able to conduct ourselves in a way that will be pleasing to God. We're able to know the, the, the right things to do. So it, if we continue to re read, it says here in verse 31, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. Verse 32. This is not just a simple mystery, but it is a great mystery. Many people doesn't understand relationships. Many people doesn't understand about husbands and wives' relationships. That is a great mystery. We don't really understand and know until we are born again, until there is a relationship between us and Christ. Until things happen in our lives and we see the hand of God lifted us up, until we submit ourselves to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will understand how Christ loves us, how husbands will love their wives, how wives will submit to their husbands. Until we understand the relationship between Christ and the church, we will never do or understand husbands and wives' relationships. And we will never be able to do the things that the Word of God is telling us to do. <clears throat> That's why it says, this is, a, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So when the husband displays his loving kindness and attitude towards the wife, it's just like Christ died for the church. Christ loved the church, gave his life to the church, everything to the church. That's how he loved the church. So every time the husband loves his wife, he's trying to exemplify, he's trying to manifest the love of Christ to the church. Every time a wife submits to her husband, it's just like the church submitting ourselves to the Lordship of Christ. If we could understand that kind of relationship, there will be no problems here on earth about divorces and annulment and separation. But because we do not understand, these things happen in our lives. So it's really good for us to know and understand this relationship. And if we know the relationship between Christ and the church, then we'll be able to conduct ourselves in the way that it is pleasing in the eyes of God. Every time we come to church, we worship Him. We, we give our hearts and our lives to, to the Lord Jesus Christ because the scripture said, He loves us first. That one, that's why we could love Him back. So it is a, a, a commandment for a husband to love the wives because that's what the Lord Jesus Christ did first. <clears throat> so how do we love our wives? As we go along, we will know. As we learn the lesson. Okay. So let's take a look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And 
verse 9. It starts from verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Such were some of you. But you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Paul was just trying to tell us that there will be things that will indulge ourselves, that if we'll not be very careful, we'll be addicted to it, and we'll be under the power of it. So, the things that he has mentioned before, the, the sins of, of the flesh, that we will be under the power of it. There will be spirit of drunkenness, there will be spirit of revilers, there will be spirit of extortioners, covetous spirits, thieves, uh, abusers of mankind, adulterers, fornicators, idolaters, all these spirits are hovering all over us every day, 24-7. And if we are not very careful, we will be the power of these things. So that's why Paul was saying, I will not be under the power of any. All things are lawful. In other words, I am free to do it. The, the freedom that we will have in Christ is a real freedom. We know what's wrong and what's right. We know what's ahead. If we do this, this will harm us. If we'll do that, this will make us good or pleasing to, to the eyes of God. We are free to do it. We can have fornication as we like. We can have adultery as we like. You're free to do it. But, this is the problem there. So that's why he said, I will not be under the power of any of those spirits and power that tries to uh, hover over us and capture us and make us their slave. Verse 14, And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by His own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of the harlot? God forbid. Know ye not that which is joined to our harlot is one body to for who said the Lord, for two said, said he shall be one flesh. But it is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body, but that committed fornication sin it against his own body. <coughs> Hallelujah. Know ye not that your, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which have... You have of God, and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So, when we are born again, God has sanctified us, God has justified us, God has washed us clean. We will not revert back to this kind of things. That's why Paul said, such were some of us, if not all. But we are all sinners before we are born again. That's why there's a need for us that we must be born again of water and of the Spirit. Cleansed, bought with the price of God by His blood. So now Paul is trying to warn us that we are not going to do these things again. Because there should be a relationship between us and Christ. So the first thing we're going to discuss is the principles of Christian dating. But let's take a look at 2 Timothy 2.22. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 22. There you go again. Paul was trying to 
reiterate the concupiscence of the flesh, sin of sexual in nature, flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So flee youthful lusts. So we'll, I will be um, trying to discuss the principles of Christian dating. If you're a single person, it will benefit you. If you're um, parents, this will benefit your children. You're going to teach your children about this. Okay. Dating is a very important preparation for our future happiness. Because habits we enact now will definitely affect our future marriage relationships. Whatever we do in our dating time, it will greatly affect what we'll be doing in our marriage life. Our happiness in our relationship between a husband and wife could start from the dating time. If your dating time is or, or or the things or steps that you have done is according to the word of God, you will have or we will have a glorious and fruitful and happy married life. But if you start in your dating life, fornication and sexual lusts, there will be problems in your married life. Okay. So the purpose of dating... The scriptures recognize every level of human relationships, from a child to an adult. The scripture is full of admonitions. In God's word, we find principles to ensure divine blessings on our lives and those with whom we are involved. So when we obey the scriptures, in other words, we will be blessed. We will ensure happiness in our lives and not defeat and a lot of problems. Because that's what the Word of God wants us to have, divine blessings. At first, there, are, they, there may be an inner resistance to the governing principles of God, but a careful study of the Bible confirms that as government increases in our lives, Peace increases as well. When we obey laws and rules, regulations of the government, we will have peace in our lives. If you're going to disobey the rules and the laws and the regulations of the government, what's out? Police will be after you. So there will be no peace. Take a look at our news. Gangster, gang, gangland killings. They are hiding, they are being, uh, all these things are happening. Break and enters, and oh. Uh, the only people that has peace in this kind of atmosphere is Christians, the real Christians. We have peace in our hearts knowing that we have hope. Knowing that God is having a protection, a shield of protection over us. That God is sending each and every one of you an angel. Ministering spirits to the air of salvation. You have your own angels. So, we are the ones that ha have peace. So, in the book of Isaiah 9 and 7, that's what it says. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And the government increases, there will be peace and joy also that will be increased in our lives. So, in any relationship, especially a partner in romance, Partner in romance. You have a dating partner. It is of utmost importance that Jesus Christ remain the central focus of one's thoughts and affections. That's why I always say, say, telling the church all the time, let the Lord Jesus Christ be the center, the focus of your affections, of your decisions, of your lives. Morning, the moment you wake up in the morning, put the Lord Jesus Christ first. 
The moment you, you um, sleep at night, he will be there as well. So, if he will be the central focus of our thoughts and affections, will be in God's mind all the time. And it is worth noting that any friendship that distracts you and causes spiritual separation from the Lord Jesus Christ is an improper one. Any relationships that distract you away from God is an improper relationship. That's why we are being commanded in the scriptures that we will not be unequally yoked with the unbeliever. Because it will pull you away from serving the Lord Jesus Christ. A dating relationship that's governed by God's principles will provide spiritual growth and learning for both parties. So it's all in God's word. Such relationships will draw each person closer to the Holy Spirit all the time. If our relationships are govern governed by the word of God, that relationship will draw you near to God. It will not draw you away from God. Once it draws you away from God, you take note of that it's a bad relationship. Scripturally sanctioned friendships and attractions are perfectly normal and are used by the Lord to mature us spiritually. So, scripturally sanctioned, in other words, the things that you'll be doing should be according to the Word of God and the principles written in the Word of God. That's why I, I, I always say to the ones that uh, ask me permission that can, I, can we go out together, I say yes, but don't embrace, don't kiss, don't do such thing because it will advance to another. Another. I know it's a hard thing, it's a strict thing, but I'm just trying to save your soul, or not me, but according to the scriptures. Because if you are not going to listen, you will be involved in such sexual relationships, and that's not good. Okay. So the, the, the topic about center is about the Lord Jesus Christ. So, okay. Dating is a discovery. Proverbs 18 and 22. Who so find it discovers a wife, find it discovers a good thing, and obtain favor of the Lord. Okay. Who so find it or discovers a wife, he find it or discovers a good thing, and obtain favor of the Lord. It is not just, you know, finding a wife outside the church. Or finding a husband outside the church. It, you, it's not, you're not obta obtaining favor of the Lord. And it's not a good thing for you to have it. <laughs> so talking about what the Bible is trying to, to uh, tell us and teach us. And the Bible says, you'll find it a wife, find it a good thing. It should be according to the word of God. That's why everything that we have done before we came to God has been forgiven, has been washed away, has been done away with. All things are passed away. Behold, everything becomes new. Now we are a new creature in Christ. We have to build our relationships around the Word of God now. We cannot put in our culture and our traditions that is contrary to the Word of God.
Now the Word of God and the principles written in the Word of God will be the governing body of our relationships. Because once we obey what the Word of God says, you will have a happy, fruitful marriage. That's why there are, there are quarrels and fights and, and problems in married life because one or the other is not obeying the Word of God. Okay. Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. So it's very precious commodity or, or thing that you have found a wife. Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. He has to have a complement because he will not be complete without the wife. In other words, just to give you an idea, if you are walking alone as a husband, you're just walking half. Your other half is somewhere else. You'll be one if you all walk together. Not only walking together physically, but trying to uh, take note of the principles and the words written in the Bible to be um, that you will do it in your lives. So you'll be one. You complement each other. Okay. Dating is means of unlocking the ambitions, personality, and mannerisms of other individuals. That's why he's got the key. He's unlocking the ambitions, personality, and mannerisms of an individual if that's your girlfriend or your boyfriend. That's where you are going to discover things that you haven't discovered before when you were just trying to be friends. It is not a futile venture, but rather a very important endeavor that should be enjoyed and undertaken with great carefulness. So dating is a serious thing. And dating is to know its other in terms of ambitions, personality, and mannerisms. It's not about knowing how good you are in the bed. It's not. So dating is where you are going to explore what's your ambitions in life. You will know his personality when you are really having a, a date because that's w that will lead to marriage. You are not going to date a person and after six months you dump and then go for another one. <laughs> That's what the world is doing. Choose the best. Wow. <laughs> okay. So you have to undertake this with great carefulness. It can be a hallway through which we pass, developing various friendships along the way. Simultaneously, we find our goals and purpose in life taking shape as we discover traits worth emulating or copying in others, as well as some characteristics to avoid. So, dating is a serious matter, serious time. So when you are going to date somebody, be serious. So we can teach our children on this. And there are some young people here, so listen young people. Old people too. Okay. So in, in dating, we are able to 
know the goals and the purpose in life of each individual. Worthy traits that you would like to emulate and copy. I like what you're doing. I like your, your line of thoughts. I like the principles that you have done in your life. I, I like to do that too. Well, it's all right. No? I don't like your mannerism or picking your nose. I don't like it. <laughs> so you're not going to emulate it. I don't like, you know, I don't like your mannerisms of uh, so many things. So you don't, you don't have to copy and follow it. But there are mannerisms which are good. So you can copy it, and there are some which you can avoid. Okay, now let's go to the levels of friendship first. There are levels of friendships that we have. In any relationship, especially a partner in romance, Oh, I breathe that okay. Okay, levels of re of friendship. The path to a meaningful relationship is a progressive one. It progresses to certain levels, from acquaintance to casual friendship, close friendship, intimate friendship, and then you will have your. Uh, dating and um, um, engagement. So it's a progressive friendship, levels of friendship. Its level of friendship holds its own set of responsibilities and freedoms. So we, each of these levels of friendship, you just have to be uh, aware of the things that you, you are uh, limited. You must be aware of the things that you are responsible to and for. Okay. There will be some limitations and some freedoms on certain levels. It is necessary to know where we are in friendship so as not to probe into a privacy of someone's life in order to have friends, we must be friendly, isn't it? Proverbs 18 and 24. So, acquaintances. Gather more acquaintances. Gather more friends on this level. Know people, whether, whether you, you know, go in the shopping center or, or put in your petrol or buy a grocery. Make some acquaintances. And that's the first level of human friendship. This level is based on occasional contacts and involves the freedom to ask general questions. So you just have to ask general questions. Not so specific, you know, not um, asking uh, how much is your salary. No, it's just to... to, to <laughs> Where do you work? That's all right. Yeah. What nationality are you? That's a general question. Make an acquaintance. So each person has the responsibility of viewing the other as a divine appointment. So now you are aiming for this lot of acquaintances that you have. You're aiming for a divine appointment later on. So you have that in your mind. So you are making friends outside the church. You know, you are trying to aim that I could witness to them, bring them to church. Right. And you are not going to make a, 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 a relationship first. But you are going to just to invite them to church, having a Bible study with them, making friends with them, acquaint, be acquainted with them. But you have that in your mind. Okay. A divine appointment and should be prepared to ask appropriate general questions. So, you must have the kind of questions that will not hurt 
or will not probe into a personal thing. Just a general question. And you know what are the questions you're going to ask for acquaintance. And the next level is a casual friendship. The second level of human friendship is a casual friendship. And this level of sharing is based on common interests. You're now having a common interest. You're now having some common activities and concerns. So, um, casual friendships. It includes the freedom to ask specific questions about opinions, ideas, wishes, personal goals. So, you know, what do you have in mind uh, after you graduated from high school? Or what do you have in mind, you know, after you uh, have finished your degree? It's like that kind of question. What's your opinion about um, having the, uh, the uh, asylum seekers be out of the country or, you know? <laughs> Opinions, you know, and um, your ideas. So, I mean, you are you are getting closer. So y you have the freedom to ask specific questions and uh, personal goals. This relationship bears the responsibility of identifying and praising positive qualities in the other person. So, when you have a good qualities, you praise him. And yeah, that's good. You have you know, you, you're aiming to be a uh, a CEO of a company, so it's good. <laughs> so you praise him, or um, you know, qualities that's worth praising. You you, you lift him up, and um, not so much with the the, um, the bad traits that he has. Because um, it, it will not be good in your conversation. You're, you're a murderer before? <laughs> That's not really good, isn't it? <laughs> That's not really good to uh, have a conversation in a casual friendship. But, you know, when you have good things, you know. And then not go to the next level, close friendship. The third level of friendship is based on mutual life goals. Now, your goal and his goal or her goal is a little bit, you know, gearing towards each other. It affords the freedom to suggest mutual projects towards reaching life goals. So now you're thinking about, uh, you have that goal of having um, a house you know, after you have a work or, or a goal of buying a car or, or uh, you know, I want to be a pastor or you want to be, you do something for the church. So you know, you, you're trying to communicate in that manner and he will say, yeah, I'd like to have a house too. Oh, okay. And I, I want to work for the church even just on, on the uh, the answering, I want to be, I want to serve. So you have your mutual goals uh, in in harmony, and you are you are trying to uh, build up that goals towards you know, towards build, um, making it into a reality. Not so much that you are going to do it straight away, but you are trying to discuss you know. Um, how much do you reckon you're going to spend for a four-bedroom house? Oh, maybe if you're going to live in Yimbumba, you will have to spend three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. You know, so you're building up your relationship. This level of sharing is marked by an F effort to visualize achievement in each other's life. So visualize already. How many kids do you want? If you, you know. <laughs> Oh, maybe three? <laughs> well, I like four. <laughs> so, you know, you visualize already. Each person feels the responsibility to discern and develop 
appropriate projects to gain this achievement. So you are now aiming for a certain goal, project. You are aiming for a certain objective in your life. You are not just having a relationship by just, you know, let's go and, and have a bowling, that's it. <laughs> so, that's just a short-term goal. After you play the bowling, you go home. <laughs> you discuss more things regarding uh, good relationships. You know, when, when the Word of God was preached last Sunday, what do you think about that? The ideas, you know. You know I, was, I was also, you know, having problems with that and blah, 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 you know. Building up your goals. I'd like to write a book. Oh, really? You know. Well, what, what kind of thing are you thinking about? Oh, a book about those who accuses me. It's a good book. <laughs> so, try to build a positive goal. Uh, responsibility to discern and develop appropriate projects to gain this achievement. Then the next level is intimate friendship. Intimate friendship. The fourth one, the most complete level of friendship is intimate friendship. This level is based on commitment to develop its other's character. So now there is a commitment. This is more um, a friendship level of friendship of those who are engaged. So, but take note that all of these relationships could involve in your relationship when you are having a boyfriend girlfriend relationship. This could involve all of this. It's not just that you, you just have that level, that you know. Now, it will, just like the, the parable of the sower, the four kind of grounds could be in, one, in your heart. Or it could be an individual. It could also involve these four kinds of grounds. The same thing with the levels. But the Im Im intimate friendship involves really uh, commitment. That you are now committed to build its other's character. And is open to freedom to correct each other. So now you can correct. And uh, if, if the scripture says so, that you are wrong, then the scripture, the word of God is going to correct you. So in a good relationship, do not just correct your wife or husband without basing that on the word of God. Because... Uh, that would be a point of contention, and uh, you, are, are, you will argue from, from morning till night. But if the Word of God says so, that's it, finished. The Word of God is the judge. Done. The buck stops there. You either obey or disobey. You will suffer if you disobey, you will prosper if you obey. So intimate relationship. There is open honesty, which with discretion and a discernment of basic causes of character deficiencies along with suggested solutions. So now, aside from corrections and appreciation, there is an honesty there. There is sincerity between this relationship. While in your casual friendships, in your, in your acquaintances, there's not much. You cannot correct a person in your acquaintanceship level. But in the intimate relationship, there is correction, there is honesty, and there is discernment of basic cause of the flaws. Why are you doing like that? There are causes. So, intimate friendship could also be done when you are married. When you're married, both should have an intimate relationship. So when you're married, do not just get a casual friendship level. Some married couples have that kind of level. They don't want to talk about the, the, their bad traits. You know, see how big your tummy is? 
<laughs> so, but in an intimate friendship, yeah, I think so. What do you reckon? Yeah. Exercise? Yeah, I think so. Well, that's yeah. there's an agreement. There's a building towards a common goal. But if you have this a casual friendship, there will be fight. <laughs> yeah. That you're going momentum to a close friendship and then the intimate relationship. You are now going to be responsible for the development of its other. You are not yet just trying to correct because you want to inflict pain and hurt. You're correcting because you want him to be well. You want your relations to be alright. Oh. So that's how it is. You're being honest. And um, the discern discernment of basic causes of character deficiencies. Oh. Why are you always sick? Because uh, I uh, always uh, you know, exercise so much. And I'm sick. <laughs> so... Uh, don't exercise so much. You build your relationship. Okay, okay, all right. Then what shall I do then? Well, maybe you know we can uh, cook together and you know try to uh, make some new recipes. And, you know, build yourself together. Okay. So those are the four types of. Friendship, which we could put in our relationship, even if husband and wife could be able to do this in their lives. The best level is the intimate friendship. So husbands and wives could be friends. And they are intimate friends. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Levels of dating. So, as I've said, this friendship could be in either situation, whether you are just uh, 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 having a um, going out to each other and then you are engaged. This kind of friendship levels could could um, be uh, also attained. Okay, levels of dating. Obviously, dating involves different stages of friendship. So you will have different stages of friendship in your dating. You will involve casual friendship or acquaintance, then close and intimate. Since the very purpose of dating is to become friends, intimate friendship should be the goal of dating. There you go. You're not just going to date some, someone, somebody, just to play around. You are not a playboy type or a playgirl type. No, you can't do that. Especially we are now in the church. That's why when Lord Lee got Peter married straight away. <laughs> in Denmark, happening. <laughs> so. <laughs> First boyfriend, husband. <laughs> so in the church, those, those, those things are supposed to be. You know. Okay, well, we'll just discuss these levels of dating and we'll continue next time. You find it interesting? Kids, I don't know. So right, so I said, parents, just give them some work, and uh, you will enjoy this. Levels of dating. The very purpose of dating is to become friends. Intimate friendship should be the goal of dating. The godly progression would be dating, engagement, and marriage. Talking about godly relationships here. We're not talking about relationships that are 
Hollywood style. <laughs> Hollywood style relationship is, you know, man, after six months, divorce. It's all right. <laughs> it's not all right. Okay, let's discuss what's dating. The first progression is dating, engagement, marriage. And you will be with God. <laughs> in dating, we become one in spirit. There you go. So, young people, if you date somebody, be one in spirit. You have the same spirit that you have received. You'll be one in spirit. Our relationship should cause us to have a greater love for God. There you go. That's why an equally yoke with the unbeliever is a no, 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 no in the scriptures. You cannot be one with their spirit. Their spirit is evil. You have a godly spirit. Spirit is dead. You have a lively spirit. You cannot be one with them. Our relationship should cause us to have a greater love for God and new desire to study scripture. You have a desire to study scriptures. So the one that you're dating should involve yourselves in studying the scriptures. Not looking at pornography. Nor trying to read books which are terrible. But read books which are spiritual. Christian books. Read the Bible. Be together in, in studying... Uh, Bible school. Involve yourself in studying with each other. Asking questions. One in the spirit. And a new desire to share Jesus with each other. As each person draws closer to Jesus in his individual life, he will automatically encourage and help the other draw closer to the Lord. That's the goal of dating. That Jesus is the center of your life. And you will later on, will not regret, but be joyful and happy that you started with a good relationship. Because in your married life, you will be a fulfilled husband and wife. Many of us are not because we haven't discovered this kind of thoughts and ways. We discovered so many problems in our lives. And we are trying to, to, uh, to do what the Word of God says. We could not even understand a relationship between husband and wife. Husband could not even love the wives and wives could not even submit to their husbands. Why? Because we haven't been taught the proper way making a relationship. See, so just imagine if a boy and a girl having this kind of relationship. It will be no problem with them for a husband to love their wives. Even if their wife is an ugly one. That's well, just, beauty is just skin deep. The beauty is the heart of a person. Yeah, uh, what are you going to do with a beautiful woman with a bad attitude? Terrible. <laughs> What are you going to do with the tall, dark, and handsome that kicks you and slaps you? No, it's terrible. So, when we learn this, these relationships, according to the scriptures, you will end up happy. So, you will automatically encourage and help the other draw closer to the Lord. Consequently, they will draw closer to each other. So when you draw yourselves closer to the Lord, you will ultimately be going closer to each other. That's the beauty of it. So you, your, your focal point is God. So you are going to meet there somewhere and be one. If your focal point is God here and, and, and riches here and world here, you cannot be one. Can't be. That's why there's struggle, there's problems. 
But if your focal point is Jesus, ultimately you're going to be one. There will be troubles because of differences in your, in your behaviors and in your upbringing. You will still end up one because your goal is God. That's why I always tell husbands and wives, the, the, uh, the, um, the goal of marriage is salvation. Salvation. When physical oneness becomes a goal of dating, then a barrier of guilt develops between each person and the Lord. So if the goal of your dating is to touch each other and kiss and hug, and then the barrier of guilt develops between each other and the Lord. If there's a guilt there, then there's a blame. Guilt and blame game. Eventually, a communication barrier develops between dating partners. If physical awareness is prevalent, then the marriage suffers later. That's what it is. That's why I'm warning the young people all the time, don't go beyond even just holding your hands. Well, we'll continue this next time. <laughs> we'll go to engagement and marriage. Hallelujah. It's good. Shall we stand tonight?